Astro Bowden. So I'm preparing for the night's adventures. I'm going to go out and shoot the uh, Pinwheel Galaxy M101. Yes. It's a, a face on spiral galaxy in Ursa Major. You can see it here. I'm planning the evening in uh, Stellarium. So I'm going to try to start the evening at around. Uh, uh, 9.30, or, well, 9.30 to 9.50. About 9.50 we should be dark enough to start meaningful exposures, but before that we can actually try to frame the target in, find a guide star with the target framed as we want it. I have it set up here. And as soon as I got that framed in with my guide star, I'll uh, slew to uh, a star close to the uh, Meridian Declination Zero and do my guiding calibration and I'll also check my focus so that I will be focused and if I have to turn the off-axis guider around to um, get my guide star around the target then I really need to check my focus again otherwise I <clears throat> might very well have um, screwed it up slightly when I uh, turn the equipment around uh, so after I've done that I'm just going to slew back and uh, start imaging yeah. and a little bit pressed on time. Uh, the moon is rising just after midnight, so I'll be having about well, just over two hours only. <clears throat> so we'll see. Um, yeah, might have to collect some more data on it. I okay. can. Yes. So it's a face-on spiral galaxy, um, about 20 million light years away. Um, it's got lots of the H2 regions in it. Uh, like we can should maybe be able to see um, in the arm structures. It's like these big dense hot gas regions like you know, we have in our own Milky Way in the um, Orion Nebula and the uh, Heart and Soul Nebula and those those targets. So <clears throat> yeah, that'll be nice if you can see that. Yeah, it's about 170,000 light years across. Yeah. And for a long time we thought the Milky Way only had about 100,000 light years across, but recent studies had shown it's more like 200,000 light years. Yeah. So, it's uh, more like uh, we're slightly bigger than this. For a long time we thought it was smaller. <coughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, it also we can't see that it has a supermassive black hole in the center. Yeah, most large spiral galaxies like this does. But <clears throat> we can't see any here. Yes. Um, that's an interesting thing as well. Yes. So, I uh, hope it's going to go well. Um, see you guys tonight. Toodle. Okay, so we have finished our little session, third session actually, on um, the Pinwheel, Pinwheel Galaxy M101. Um, so I'm just going to do my flats. The moon is just peeking over the horizon now, tree line. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm just pointing it down. I'm going to wrap it up in some white uh, fabric and uh, shine a torch on it. Yeah, could also shine it straight on the moon if it hurries up a bit, but I'm just going to do the uh, my torture. Yeah. Right, you can actually see a little bit of the shadowing effects from the off-axis guider on that. This is maybe the one of the reasons why you really have to do flats when you do off-axis guiding is that you, even though the off-axis, the prism doesn't actually cover anything of the sensor, you do get some shadowing effects that will um, cause horrible effects on the picture unless you do your flats. Yes.
there is where I have my little guide computer and up in the garage uh, in the distance here about 100 meters away I've got my Wi-Fi router and I actually got Wi-Fi covering down here which is great so I actually can sit in the house uh, and monitor things so far I'm just doing the DSLR and I don't have this particular DSLR don't support uh, USB control uh, in bulb mode so I cannot actually do anything except 30 second exposures uh, with USB control otherwise I could use K-Stars and, and run the mount and guiding and the whole shebang and monitor the images coming through as well <clears throat> maybe I can still do that um, I just need to look more into it uh, but yes so as it looks now um, that's what we have to do I just have to can sit and look at the guiding but I'll have to come down and, and check the actual results yes. and today I actually had guiding I'm gonna show you the screen here um, I had guiding of about well mostly plus minus two arc seconds peak deviation with a RMS value of um, 7.7 7 arc seconds in right ascension and 0.56 for this last 200 samples in declination so a total of 0 0.9 0 0.9 that is uh, that is really good in my in my world expand the view a bit more it's pretty much the same yeah that's that's fantastic guiding if you ask me So, I'd say the CGX mount is, um, is um, it's pulling through slightly. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the moon coming up there. So, it's packing up time. So, I don't know if you can see, we've got Balkan in the chair there, saying hello, here, he's just watching over here, making sure everything's going according to plan. Ready to go in? Maybe do some uh, yeah, flat stacking. Uh, check which one to use. Get a couple of drinks. Post everything on Instagram. Yeah. Ain't that right, Baldy? Yeah, you go to bed. <sighs> okay. So. All that's left for us to do here is to stick the door back on. Yeah. That's it. Cut off one now. Toodaloo. Ooh, well, okay. I know I shouldn't be, uh, be uh, uh, doing anything with the images today, really. I mean, uh, I'm too tired now, but 
I thought I might just take a look on the flat frames just to make sure that they are that they are fine. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Maybe maybe you stack them and, and just make sure they're okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. So I got like a project for that. So I got like a you know, flat stacking project. There we go. Yeah, I got you can just calibrate the, all them and and integrate them and to get that that. Yeah, can do that. That's okay. Surely. <clears throat> then I then I go to bed. Yeah. Do that. Yes. <clears throat> you know, I could just uh, calibrate one, one frame. You know, just one. Yeah, go, go out and load my my light stacking project. Yeah. Can go like that. Yeah, that looks nice. I, I think I made it just. Might just have to. Uh, I just want to stack them. I got some beer left here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, I just made a drizzle integration here just to make sure that we get a big, big, big image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that. <clears throat> so let's just see what the automatic background extraction says. I'm I'm going to bed now, guys. Yeah. I'm done here. Done here. Done for tonight. So oh, let's just all the stretch that and see what we got here. Oh yeah, look at that. Really nice. Well, we need to do some like dynamic background extraction to <clears throat> lose much of this. Yeah, that's it. No, I'll do that in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Move on and do some, let's just do some background neutralization, some color calibration. Yeah. Very nice, we're just gonna, well, we can't well, stretch this very carefully now. Very, very careful with the stretching. Here, we don't want to be overstretching. Oh, hang on. Oh, I guess we can just, ooh, do it in the morning. <clears throat> Sober eyes. No, not too tired. Oh yeah, look at them contrasts. Oh, that's a keeper, that. Excellent. One more time. Get some color. Get some color in there. Oh, look at that. Oh. You know, space is not dark, yeah? It's not black. Some good old contrasts, yeah? Look. Oh, that is super. Oh, that looks artistic and nice, yeah. Look at it. Sweet, sweet. Oh, maybe that's too aggressive. Yeah, yeah, we need to be modest with this. <clears throat> Quite modest. Oh, look at that. Pretty as hell. Sharing it. And then I'm going to bed. My work here is done. Yeah. Hey, pod. <laughs>